Welcome to our review on global warming. First thing then, we need to just have a little bit of a recap on the atmosphere and why it's actually important to us. So our atmosphere is actually essential for life to exist on Earth. And the reason behind that is number one, it contains oxygen, which living things obviously need. And secondly, it's actually going to be protecting us. And it protects us from these high energy ultraviolet radiations that come from the sun. Now, if we didn't have the atmosphere, those high energy UV radiations would be able to reach us on the surface. And that would lead to some pretty significant issues with existing. Now, what we find is that our atmosphere will allow most electromagnetic waves to pass through it. So what we find is things like infrared radiation the sun also produces, light, etc. They can pass through the atmosphere. Now, that infrared radiation is going to be absorbed by some of the gases in the atmosphere, which prevents it from radiating back into space. Now, this process whereby the infrared radiation is absorbed by gases in the atmosphere is called the greenhouse effect. And we can look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment. There are three greenhouse gases we need to remember. The first one is water vapour, and that makes up about 0.4% of our atmosphere, which comes naturally from the water cycle. So there aren't actually any significant man-made sources of the water vapour at all. This is just a natural greenhouse gas that occurs. Second greenhouse gas is methane, which is just 0.0002% of the atmosphere. The natural sources from animal waste and our man-made sources are things like intensive farming when we're extracting and burning fossil fuels. They all produce methane there. And our third and final greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide, which makes up 0.039% of our atmosphere. Naturally, we'll find it comes from volcanic eruptions and waste from all living things through respiration. And man-made sources come primarily from the extraction and burning of fossil fuels and also from transport. So if we think about the greenhouse effect now in more detail, what we actually see happening then is from the sun, these shorter wavelength electromagnetic waves pass through the atmosphere. Now, when they reach the surface of the earth, that radiation is going to be absorbed and therefore warms it up. The earth is then going to emit this longer wavelength infrared radiation and as that reaches our atmosphere, there are those gases, so carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, that are going to absorb that longer wavelength infrared radiation. So it's preventing those longer wavelengths from escaping back into space, and therefore we warm up the actual Earth itself. Now what we find is that the actual greenhouse gas that's responsible for the largest percentage of the greenhouse effect is water vapor. However, what we find is that methane is 80 times stronger than carbon dioxide, but because it's present in lower amounts, we don't really think that much about methane as a big problem greenhouse gas. We are always told that the biggest problem, the one that's going to lead to the biggest greenhouse effect, etc., is carbon dioxide. So that actually accounts for 20% of all of the greenhouse effect. Now, what we find is the reason we can't do anything really about water vapour is because there's not really any significant man-made sources, if you remember our table. However, carbon dioxide is one we can do something about, which is why we focus so much on that. So carbon dioxide is responsible for this climate change and the greenhouse effect. And there is something we can do by reducing the amount of fossil fuels we burn, for example. There is a big question that some people like to ask anyway, is that is climate change actually a man-made problem or is it something that occurs naturally? So all scientists pretty much agree that we're in a period of global warming. So they are all pretty much in acceptance that the world is increasing in temperature. So what we're finding is the greenhouse effect is warming our planet at an increasing rate, which is leading to climate change. However, that's where the agreement then ends. What we then find is that some scientists believe that global warming is actually just part of a natural regular cycle of warming and cooling that's been demonstrated throughout the history of the Earth. But most scientists believe that humans are having an effect on this. So yes, we do have these natural cycles that do have these periods of warming and cooling that have occurred throughout the history of Earth. But the effect we are seeing now is greater than we've seen previously. And that is down to us as a human race. Because what we're doing are things like carrying out deforestation. So we're cutting down the trees that would have removed the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. 
then we're burning large numbers of fossil fuels, releasing greater amounts of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. So those two things together obviously lead to an increased carbon dioxide level, and as we've seen, that is quite a significant greenhouse gas, which then traps that longer wavelength infrared radiation. So we are responsible for global warming, but it's not just humans, if you like. There are some natural sources of these things, but humans are certainly contributing to this.